Dart is an extremely powerful language, and when we couple it with the frameworks such as Flutter, it can help us create amazing mobile application desktop apps as well as web apps. But one thing that I see common across the Dart ecosystem is that a lot of developers use it incorrectly or maybe do not use the language's complete capabilities when they're building their applications. So what I want to do in this video is share with you guys some do's and don'ts when it comes to Dart programming and hopefully help you write more clear and concise code. So the first thing that I want to talk about is how do you use the null of your operator? And this is going to be something that is going to really enhance the way you write your Dart code and really make it much more clear and concise. So to give you an example of how to use the null of your operator, I'm going to do the following. Let's just say that I have a optional string type variable called name. And for now, I do not give name a value. So name currently is null. And what I want to do is basically print to the console name. Just this statement by itself has nothing wrong with it. But let's just say that what I want to do is actually determine if name is null. And if it's null, then print something else to the console instead of null. Otherwise, just print whatever the value of name is. One way you could go about this would be to write a ternary operator statement, whereby I'm going to say that if the name is null, then what we're going to be doing is printing to the console Hussein. Otherwise, what I'll do is just print the value of name to the console. And if I click run on this, you are going to see that it's going to give me an output of a send to the console. Now, Dartpad is really intelligent and it's giving me an output on line three, letting me know that I should opt for using the null of your operator, which are these two question marks, instead of what I'm doing right now. So let's implement this null of your operator. So to implement it, all we have to do is basically type in the variable name, which is in this case name. And then after that, I'm going to be using the null of your operator, which are two question marks. And following that, I'm going to give a value which i want to use in the case that the variable being referenced here is null so it's going to be hussein so what we've basically done is replicated the same logic as the statement before but in a much more clear and concise manner so if i do run again you're going to see the name is going to be outputted to the console which is hussein and if i set a value for name to be something now and it's not null let's just say for example brandon and do run then you're going to see that now on the console it's going to print brandon for us so this is how you use the null of your operator within Flutter. It's a very useful thing that you should really try to implement within your programming practice. Now, what I'd like to talk about is that whenever we're programming, there comes a time when we are working with lists. And sometimes a very common thing that we have to do is take some elements from one list and then add them to another. So how do you do this? Well, I see a lot of people do something like this. First, what they'll do is that they'll create, like, let's just say a main list. And in this case, I'm creating a list of integers and it has three values in it. And then they are going to create a second list, which is something like this. And then they want to append basically the contents of the first list to the second list. So they might do something like second list dot add all. And within add all, they're going to give an argument for the list from which they want to take the elements and add to the second list. So in this case, this would be main list and do this and then print second list. So all of this can be done in another way whereby you can basically say that second list can be equal to, and then I'm going to use the spread operator and I'm going to do dot, 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 which is the spread operator main list, and then dot, 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 second list. And the spread operator is a much nicer way of joining lists together into one unified list. And if I do run, this is going to work the same and it's going to produce the same output. So now a lot of people are going to ask me, well, Hussein, why do we use this? And why should we use this instead of the add all method that we've seen before? Well, the add all method can become really cumbersome if you have a lot of lists. So let's just imagine that I have another list that I want to add to the same list. Then I would need to have another add all function that I would have to call in order to add that third list to this. But if I just create another list here, let's just say int, and this is going to be our third list. And I'm going to set this equal to let's just say 10, 11, and 12. Then by using the spread operator, all I have to do is add another question mark, add the spread operator, and then add third list here. And then just like that, with the magic of the spread operator, it's going to work as intended. And now we are going to get the second list as a list that has all of the elements from the main list, the second list, and the third list added to it. So this is the advantage of using a spread operator. Another common thing that might come up when you're working with lists is to initialize a list or add some initial values to it. One way that I've seen people do this is the following. They'll create a list, let's just say a list of integers, and I'm going to call this data and set this equal to an empty list. And then I'm going to create a for loop and I'm going to basically iterate through, let's just say for int i equals to zero from zero to a hundred. And then on every iteration, I'll increment i. And then within this, I'm going to do data.add and I'm going to add i to it. 
like so. So then with this done, I'm going to do print data and that's pretty much it. And let's run the code and see what happens. So as you can see that the console prints out a list in which there are values from zero to hundred. So there's nothing wrong with this code. It's perfectly fine for it, but there's a lot of verbosity in this for loop. And this is something that where we can use something else in order to make our code much more easy to understand and concise. So instead of the for loop, what we can do is basically remove this for statement. And then where we're initializing our actual list, I'll keep it the same. But then after this, I'm going to do data is equals to, and then I'm going to use the function on the list object called generate. And what generate does is that it takes in a argument which is the amount of elements that we want to generate and a function that is basically going to be invoked for each of the elements that are going to be added to this list. And then the value that's going to be returned from this function is going to be added to the list. So in this case, what I want to do is just add the same index. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take in the index and I'm going to return the index like so. And this way it's going to be much easier for us and a much more concise way for us to generate a list of digits from zero to hundred using the list.generate function instead of a for loop. So if I do this, you can see that the output is the same, but this time our code is much easier to understand. Another thing that I've seen a lot of people do is when they are creating their conditional statements or control flow statements that they use Boolean values incorrectly. And what I mean by this is let's just say that I want to have a Boolean value, which is bool is continue, let's just say, and I set that equal to false. And what I want to do is that I have a if statement where I check if is continue is equals to true. And a lot of people do it this way. So if is continue is true, print yeehaw. And that's pretty much it. So if I run the code, you're going to see that we are going to get no output. So as you can see, nothing gets printed to the console. But if I set the is continue value to be true and run this, then you're going to see that the console prints yeehaw. But to simplify the statement, all you can do is just remove all of this checking if the value is equals to true and just doing is continue. And by default, what this statement means is that is continue is true, which is the same thing that we were doing, then print yeehaw, else don't. And if you want to do false, then one thing you could do would be to actually check it like so, which is equal to equals to false. Or another way you could do this is by just putting an exclamation mark in front of the variable name. And this way it's going to be the same. So if you do this and you run the code, you're going to see that it's not going to print anything to the console. But if I go ahead and set the is continue variable to false and click run, then it's going to print yeehaw. So opt for using this type of a syntax instead of true or false. It's going to be much more cleaner and easier for you to understand as well as other people. The next thing I want to talk about is string concatenation within Dart. So let's just say that I have a string, which I'm going to call S1 and is equals to hello. And then I have another string, which I'm going to call string S2, which is world. And then I am going to say string three, which is going to be subscribe like so. And then what I want to do is that I want to create a string, which I am going to call combined and it's going to be S1 plus S2 plus S3. And this is a way that I've seen a lot of Dart developers basically implement string concatenation within their program. So if I go ahead and do combined, then I run, you're going to see that it's going to print some kind of an output of the concatenated string S1, S2, S3 that's stored and combined to the console. But what if I want to add some spacing between hello and then after world? Well, if I'm using this type of a strategy, I might have to then add a string, add a space, concat again, and then do the same here. So plus space, and then add another plus sign here and remove this one. And you can see that the code becomes very cumbersome and very difficult to maintain. So this is not a good example of how you should actually implement concatenation within Dart. What you should actually do is use the string interpolation operator, which is a dollar sign, and then input the variable name here. So I want to use S1, and then I want to have a space, and then I am going to interpolate or put the value of S2 into here, like so. And then I'm going to do another space, S3. And this is the proper way of actually combining different strings together in Dart. So if I click run now, you're going to see that we're going to get the same output, but the code is much cleaner and easier for us to understand. And the final thing that I wanna talk about is how people check if lists are empty or not. So I've seen that a lot of 
Dart programmers, what they do is that they would have a list, let's just say a list of int, and I'm gonna say users, and it's an empty list. And then what I want to do is basically check if users is empty. So one way people would do this is by doing length is equals to zero, and then basically print something here. So I'm going to say print empty, like so. And then if I click run, and forgot to add a semicolon here. You're going to see that on the console we get printed empty. Instead of using dot length is equals to zero, what we can do is actually use the ins empty variable on the actual users list. And this is available or on list objects. And what this is basically going to do is simplify the logic for us and make it easier for understand what's actually happening. So if our users is empty, then I want to print empty to the console. So it achieves the same purpose as what we were doing before, where we were basically checking if the length was equal to zero, but in a much more nicer and cleaner fashion. And that's pretty much it for today's tutorial. And I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video as well as subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.